Welcome to Bravo pH Testing. Today we will review the proper use of Bravo pH testing. Testing is usually performed for patients having symptoms of reflux, heartburn, regurgitation, chest pain, cough, nausea, or trouble controlling symptoms with medical therapy. The Bravo test can help identify reflux. The Bravo test identifies when acid refluxes into the esophagus or food tube. It measures the acid exposure, counts the number of reflux episodes, and allows for measurements of whether symptoms are related to reflux events. During a routine endoscopy, a small capsule is placed into the food tube. The capsule affixes to the lumen and records for 96 hours. A small amount of nickel is found in the Bravo device. Please let your nurse or clinician know if you have a nickel or metal allergy. Does the Bravo hurt? Mostly no. About 95% of patients have no sensation that the Bravo has been placed. About 5% of patients can sense discomfort where the capsule was placed. And less than 1% of patients experience pain, which is severe. Medications can help. Very infrequently, the capsule needs to be removed due to discomfort. In our use, less than 2% of Bravo tests have technical difficulties. 98% of the time, things go as planned. Your referring clinician should instruct you on how to take acid-suppressing medications like PPI. Most patients are asked to stop these medications for a full week prior to testing, but please confirm with your referring physicians their recommendations. To review, proton pump inhibitor medications are Prilosec, Prevacid, Nexium, Asifex, Protonix, and Dexalent. H2 blockers are Zantac, Pepsid, Axid, or Tagamet. The Bravo capsule is affixed in the lumen of the esophagus for about four to 10 days and then passes through the system, eventually departing through the stool. Please make sure not to have an MRI testing for 30 days after your Bravo testing. A motility specialist will review your test, present the case to a quality review, and the results should be finalized within four weeks of returning the receiver. If the receiver is not returned, the test cannot be analyzed. This is the Bravo receiver. I'm going to go over the different buttons and the screen. The screen right now, as you can see, is dark. It's receiving information wirelessly from the probe at all times. It's somewhat like a cell phone, where the cell phone is always ready to receive a call, but I couldn't pick it up and make a phone call without waking it up. So when I'm ready to put some information into the Bravo receiver, I just need to wake it up by pushing any button. Once I push a button, you'll see the backlight comes on and there are some images on the screen. The first button here is a picture of a fork and a knife. That's for eating or drinking anything other than water. We want you to eat and drink normally, have your normal meals, use your regular diet. However, we ask that you please don't sip on drinks throughout the day other than water, and please don't snack constantly grazing throughout the day. When you're ready to eat or drink, first check to see if the backlight is on. When you can see the images, you'll know that the uh, receiver is ready to receive your input. So first, wake the receiver up, and then I'll push the button with the fork and the knife when I'm ready to start eating or drinking. The way I know that the receiver has received my information is there's a small green light that's blinking in the button of the fork and the knife. That means the receiver has received your meal signal. When you're done eating and drinking, you're gonna push that button again. Again, making sure the backlight is on before you push the button. So I'll push it one more time. You can see that the green blinking light attached to the fork and knife button goes off, and so the meal has ended. The next button I'd like to go over is the picture of someone lying down in bed. It's called the supine button or laying down button, and it's really not about being awake or asleep. It's about the position of your body. We need you to push this button anytime that you lie down with the head of the bed 30 degrees or less. So a recliner in the low back position is considered lying down for this test. If you go home and you're watching a movie laying down on the couch, that does count as lying down, so please push the button when you lie down, and you'll push it one more time when you wake up. So again, the backlight is off. I'll wake it up by pushing any button, and then I'm going to push the lying down button, 
and you can see that the machine has received my signal because the green light attached to that button is blinking. When I'm done lying down, I'll just push the button one more time and the green light stops blinking. The two buttons on the end, the fork and the knife and the lying down button are shaped like parentheses. And you can remind yourself that we need you to have a parentheses when you start uh, eating or drinking or lying down and then once again when you stop. So we need start times and stop times for the two buttons on the end. The three buttons on the middle are your symptom buttons. You have a triangle, which is right below a picture of a person clutching their chest. That's for chest pain. We have a circle right below a picture of someone with some food coming out of their mouth. That's for regurgitation, feeling like food is coming back up into your mouth or the back of your throat. The last button is the square underneath a picture of a heart with a lightning bolt. That's for heartburn. We need you to push these buttons just one time when you have your symptom. So when you have regurgitation, push this button one time. There is not a green blinking light that continually blinks, but it does blink one time and beep when you push it. That's how you know it's received your message. If you have symptoms, if you say, oh, I have heartburn all the time, it's just constant, we don't want you to constantly be pushing this button. We need you to push it when it's the worst. If you push it all throughout the day, that actually doesn't help us with our data collection and correlating to what the probe is sending us. So just please push it when it's the worst. And you can leave us a note on the diary saying, my heartburn is really constant, but I pushed the button when it was the worst. The diary is really useful as a backup. If you feel that maybe you're a little uncomfortable with the buttons, you can always write things down. We do not need to know what you are eating. We just need to know when you are eating and lying down. Um, another good use for the diary is when you take your medications, if you've been told to take your medications during this test. We do not need to know when you take any of your other medications, such as blood pressure, high cholesterol, those sorts of medications, we don't need you to write them down. But what we need for you, from you is please write down when you take your proton pump inhibitors or your H2 blocker, some of those medicines that we mentioned earlier. If you've been told not to take those medications, please don't take them and you don't need to write that down. Another use of the diary might be if you forget to push the button. So for instance, let's say you eat lunch today at 12 o'clock and you push the button and the meal button is blinking green, it's got your meal, and you stop eating at 12.30. But it's 1.30 or 2 and you look down and you happen to notice, oh, the green light is still blinking, it thinks I'm still taking a meal. Go ahead, turn it off then, and then write us a note. I actually stopped eating at 12.30 today, but I forgot to push the button. We can always adjust it. Can I take it in the shower with me? You cannot take it in the shower. We need you to leave it outside the shower. You can put it outside the shower, um, keep it dry where it won't get splashed on, so maybe it needs to go in a bag or under a towel. Um, whenever the receiver is too far away from you, it will just stop collecting data. When you bring it back close to you, it will repair. Also, it will beep at you, and there's this tiny little light that's not connected to any of the buttons. It blinks blue. It only blinks about once every 30 seconds, so it's not blinking continuously, but when it gets too far away, it will blink red. So it will beep and it will blink red. When you bring it back, it will start blinking blue again. I have to travel soon. Can I bring it on an airplane? We can give you a note that says that you have a medical device in case um, the TSA people have questions about this, but I don't think that they will even find it. What do I do with it when I sleep? Do I have to have that on my body? So it needs to be close enough to sense the, re sense the probe and get its data wirelessly. We definitely want to be collecting data while you're asleep because a lot of people has, have acid reflux while they're asleep. So you can either leave it on the nightstand if it's able to pair and before you go to sleep you can tell if it's pairing by um, looking at the blue blinking light. Um, but a lot of people need to wear it on their chest while they're sleeping. What happens to the probe when the test is finished? When the test is finished, um, the probe will slough off of your esophagus, just fall off naturally, and it usually takes five to 10 days to fall off. Then it will pass through your whole GI system and be eliminated with your stool. Do I have to bring that back to you? You do not need to bring the probe back. The probe is disposable, um, but we do need the receiver back as soon as the test is finished. So if it's a 96 hour test, it will span five days. So we need it back on the sixth day during normal business hours. It's really hard for me to get back here. Can I ship it to you? 
You can ship it to us. We can give you a box and the address to uh, return the receiver. However, one thing to know is that the cost of the shipment is your responsibility. Um, and we also need it to be sent by UPS or Federal Express only, not US mail. Thank you for your time and attention. This video provides a brief overview of the Bravo PH device and its use. Your physician and nurse will be able to answer any questions you may have in detail before your procedure. Good luck.